Florida State should absolutely beat Boston College, but how well will they play in an effort to get better, and how will that impact the game against Clemson next week? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into another episode of Locked On Seminoles. I'm your host, Brian Smith. Thank you to everyone that makes this their first listen each and every day. You can find us free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Today's episode is going to focus on all the different challenges that Florida State has against Boston College. And I am not, repeat, I am not talking about Florida State losing to BC. If that happens, we have a totally different discussion to have next Sunday, this coming Sunday, and I don't think that's going to be the case. The challenges are related to what's coming up. Of course, the big game at Death Valley at Clemson in just over a week. That is the bigger sticking point here. How does Florida State get better? We're going to talk about that in segments one and two in different particulars. Number one is the broad perspective. Two, we're going to talk about Thomas Castellanos and all the challenges that Boston College can give you. And then third, all of these things, I'm curious to what the media thinks. Florida State's playing a noon game. It's not exactly the biggest game in the world because Boston College is just not that good. Florida State needs to make hay every single time they come out, so this game is important. With that being stated, a couple of quick notes. Number one, I think this is a very important game because Florida State has the opportunity to present itself as an every week team. The pollsters, not just the ones in the Associated Press poll that we're paying attention to now, but those on the college football committee, the ones that do matter, that's something to think about because if you do not consistently impress them at the end of the year, your your ranking in that poll, the one that counts, will not be where you want it to be. So LinkedIn, today's sponsor is LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right. So what is it that I'm quote unquote concerned about here? I look at things from a coaching perspective because I ask coaches, hey, what, what is it like when you prepare for this kind of team when it's somebody you're just flat better? They know it. You know it, and importantly, going through the week in practice, your players know it. You're not going to get 100%, no matter if you had 50 All-American players, the top 50 coaches of all time on your staff. Obviously, not realistic, but even if you did, you're not going to get 100% the same value out of practices, in my opinion, when you're playing an inferior opponent. Period. That being stated... These are the areas that I wrote down on my sheet, my notes that I do before every single Lock On Seminoles podcast. Consistency. And in particular, I put a little notation. Penalties. This is the kind of game where you can outgain somebody 480 to 260 and win by 10. Why? Because you had three touchdowns called back. You had three sacks that even though they were great plays by one guy, somebody else was holding or somebody else jumped off sides, penalties. That'll be probably the number one thing I talk about on Sunday. That is my guess. Good or bad, I have no idea how it'll be, but why do I bring them up? Penalties are about right here. For those of you watching on YouTube, you can see that I'm tapping my head. And for those of you just listening on Spotify or whatever, just note that it's all mental here, brother. It's all mental. Florida State needs to be locked in in a way that goes beyond the color of the uniform in front of them, no matter the position. That is a concern I have every week. And it started already. Practice, film study, nutrition, how you slip, what you were thinking about. Are they looking ahead to Clemson? A lot of kids are going to. One could make the argument that Norvell or any other major college football coach has the biggest challenge week to week of keeping their young men focused. Not just staying away from girls and being stupid and going out and drinking beer, but I'm talking about, hey, we know we're better than this team. 
I cannot say that enough times. If they lay an egg, even if they win, it's going to impact them at the end of the year. The polls matter. And I'll get into that in segment three. The polls matter now, even if they're Associated Press. Humans are going to be human. If you lay an egg, and even if you do improve, that can cause problems, potentially at least, down the line. So here are the other things that I'm concerned about. The rotation. Florida State should be able to rotate guys, and that's what they do anyway. Even against LSU, they did a tremendous job of it. They should be able to rotate guys in and out of the lineup. Defensive line in particular, that's the key in the secondary, etc. But how impactful are they when they're coming in and out if they build a lead, let's say they're up 28 to seven and a half. That's probably about right. I just don't think BC's got enough for Florida State unless, again, those penalties, mental errors, bust in the in the secondary, whatever. Unless those things transpire, the Knoll should roll. There is no other excuse here. The talent disparity is significant. And Florida State, quite frankly, has more to play for and has a veteran team led by Jordan Travis, Norvell, and that entire team. There's only a handful of guys in the freshman and sophomore class that have broken into the depth chart just because they've got so many seniors, really, and they've earned it. They've been through the system and they've earned it. But those kids still play and they rotate a ton of players in the underclassmen ranks. Which ones of those show themselves to be really good? I'm just curious, just as a fan of college football, how are you developing your kids and how's that going to help you like Clemson, Maybe they play somebody else down the line that's a big-time team in the playoff or something. They need a freshman because somebody's been hurt. Those are things that are important, too, beyond the polls that I'm going to talk about in segment three. Really pay attention to that because that can also influence what happens with those penalties and potential busts. It doesn't take much to change a scoreboard, to change the momentum of a football game. Finally, being dominant. When you have a chance to put your foot down and make it happen, pedal to the metal. For instance, if BC shoots itself in the foot, they have a couple of false starts back to back. It's first and 20 and they're backed up at their own nine yard line. Do you let them off the hook or do they end up either getting a first down or at least gaining some yardage and punting from a more comfortable position? If their first possession, they ended up having their punter inside his own end zone. That football may never get to the punter. You never know the snapper. You have to put the pressure on. Do you get a sack? Do you get a deflection? Is there something that is a wow play, that is a dominant football play? That's very, very important, not only for Florida State, but any team in this situation. And do it early. Don't sit around and wait on the other team to screw up. Make it happen. Florida State, up front in particular, should be able to dominate in this game. There is one caveat. I want to talk about in segment two here in a minute. That's Thomas Castellanos and some of the things I went through their last game against Holy Cross before I came on the show today. He's unique, and I'm going to talk about his statistics and some of the challenges. But overall, even if he runs for a few first downs with his legs, and he's a freak athlete, you have to be consistent in being aggressive, playing downhill, especially defensively, enforcing Boston College into uncomfortable circumstances. Obviously, you want every team to be in third and long. That's the unwritten rule that is just obvious. But you can also take away their preferences in those circumstances, including making sure you just don't have busts. Because Florida State's athleticism and their experience in the back seven is good enough to gain multiple turnovers in this game. And that includes fumbles, big hits, stripping the football, holding somebody up, stripping it out with the next guy. These are things that Florida State's coaching staff teach every day. Those are the types of things that I'm looking for. Does it happen? I don't know. But that's why you have to find out, especially in first quarter, because you can break a team's will rather quickly. And I think that Florida State could be up maybe even 20 points by the end of the first quarter, if they catch a couple breaks, if you know, BC, it would not surprise me if their defense had a lapse, let's be honest. And like Benson goes 80 yards for a score on the first play. Would I be shocked? No, neither should you. So with that being said, segment two, again, we're going to talk about some of the concerns specifically, a little more of a finite look at Boston College but from their offensive perspective, because I think that's the key to their emotional engine. That's why I picked it.
So we'll talk about that here in just a second. First off, we're going to talk about LinkedIn Jobs. They are our key sponsor today. Here we go. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. If you think about LinkedIn, it's, it's pretty simple here. We all have to hire people in some capacity in our lives as we move up. People you work with, people you give advice on. I'm sure there's been a time for many people like myself where you probably should have done it differently. Well, here's a great chance. LinkedIn gives you an easy chance through their app to get in there and put out a job that is very simple to read, very simple to understand and communicate with people that are the right candidates for you. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Now, segment two here is going to be about Thomas Castellanos. It's going to be about the ability to stay focused. Again, that's going to be a recurring theme. It's hard in these kinds of games. I mean, they're favored by like 20 or something like that. But it's also going to be about this game is going to set up how you perform against Clemson. That's the bigger point. I know Norvell can't talk about it publicly from that standpoint, but I wouldn't be shocked if he even said it. Like, if you guys want to be ready for Clemson, you need to show you can really do your job against BC. Some coaches go that route and some don't. That's that's a very unique situation. But my other two things here are bus and just the big plays in general, both directions. If BC does hit a big play, how does Florida State respond? It's the first true road game. Things of that nature matter, and you get a little bit of a gauge for the future. Hint, it's not easy playing at Death Valley, and this is not a typical Clemson team. They, they're trying to find themselves. But when you take somebody lightly, that's when you get bit. Don't allow that to happen. So against BC, let's go over a couple of things before I get into Thomas Castellanos. If you have an early turnover, hey, sometimes – the other team makes a play. They give out scholarships too. Play the next play. Do not sit back and just whine and complain to each other. You should have done this. To you. Go to the sideline, take the coaching, find out what happened, go to the next play. Two, and this is something that you also need to do on the other side. If Benson does pop an 80-yarder, if Coleman goes 75 for a score, whatever, or if you just march right down the field and score, that doesn't mean it's going to be that way in the next play the next drive, for the rest of the game, any of that. How focused are you to get better the rest of the game on every rep? Florida State has done that so far. Like the first two games, I mean, they've had some a little bit of sloppiness against Southern Miss, but they scored over 60. It's kind of hard to bitch. They need to show that now in a more difficult scenario. It's one thing at Dope Campbell against a really inferior opponent. This is a Power 5 school on the road, long flight, the whole nine yards. How are they going to respond to good and bad? There's no guarantee that we really know. Jordan Travis and the offense should be able to generate a lot of yards and eat up the clock if they want. I don't know how much fast break they're going to do, uh, a la Charlie Ward and all that. They may try to slow it down some and just beat the bejesus out of them up front and not show much to Clemson. I don't know. Whatever it is that Norvell and his entire staff come up with is a collective game plan for special teams, defense, and offense. They just need to go with it, be focused. So with that, let's talk about Thomas Castellanos, which I, I brought up a little bit earlier this week. It's a kid I know. He's, he's from Ware County High School in East Central Georgia. Really good program. It's one of my favorite places to see a high school game too. Florida State offered him and a bunch of other schools, but he was offered as a running back, a receiver, a corner. Tremendous, tremendous athlete. Like when you see him up close and you shake the kid's hand, you're like, this kid's built like a professional boxer. I mean, he is gifted physically. Cannon for an arm. But he's very new, A, to Boston College because he transferred from UCF. This is his second year in college. And B, he just doesn't know the receiving corps that well because it takes a gazillion reps to be comfortable. Ask Jordan Travis. The difference from where he was with most of the guys that are coming back this year just in the last six months has probably changed, let alone he's been there since 20. 
all the guys that have been there with him, it's going to get better. Thomas hasn't had that same opportunity. There are going to be some errant throws and some decisions that are off. Florida State has to take advantage. Even one missed pick can change the course of a game. If it comes right to you and it's a dud, don't drop it. Not only don't drop it, when you get it, make it happen. Again, you want to knock these guys out early. You want to get the rotation going. You want to go into halftime plus 20 or more. If you don't, that's on you. Florida State's the better team. Castellanos is your conduit, good or bad again. Because here's the other part with him, and I tracked a little bit of this with their first two drives last week against Holy Cross. He can throw it a mile. His arm strength is as good as any player in college football behind center. It is a gun. I've seen it live several times, high school, and when he was at UCF, he can absolutely zip it. He just doesn't always know where it's going, and I'm not sure, like most young quarterbacks, if he's ready for post-snap reads after the football has hit his hands. If Florida State messes around in the secondary, he can get some advantages, but they can also trick him a few times, so they need to take advantage of that. His seven runs in the first two drives against Holy Cross went like this. 18, 4, and 1 on the first drive. Second drive, 4, 5, 4, and 4. The second drive is the more concerning one for me, and here's what I mean. They're going to run some RPO, quarterback sweep, quarterback power, all kinds of stuff against Florida State, and they're probably going to run a lot of trick plays or similar to quote-unquote trick plays. Why? They're not going to line up and run over Florida State. There is zero chance of that if Florida State shows up at all mentally. BC knows that. Castellanos might run a sweep. Then on that next play, same kind of action, he might throw it. Then on the next play, that same kind of action, and it's a reverse. They're going to do a lot of things that are eye candy. You hear that term a lot from different broadcasters. Thomas is the perfect guy to institute that circumstance. His athleticism, he's going to make some guys look bad. I don't care if they're a future NFL player like Verse. There will be a play where he makes Verse miss. Guaranteed. Why? He's just that good of an athlete. But that doesn't mean the Calvary can't come. Set the edge. Make him stay inside the pocket. I guarantee you, if you make Thomas Castellanos a pocket passer, minimum one pick in this game because they'll get a deflection or something, even if the ball was going to be on line, with Florida State's big defensive line pushing the pocket, coming off the edge, they'll get a deflection for a pick, or he'll overthrow somebody, or one of his average receivers, they don't have the greatest receiving corps, will have a ball go off their hands, go up. You just got to keep him in the pocket. Good things will happen to the Knowles if they keep Thomas Castellanos in the pocket. The other thing with him running, I don't think we've seen even close to all the different things they're going to do. It was only a couple games they played. And they did struggle against Holy Cross last week. But that's another one of those harbinger of things to come or is it kind of scenarios. Again, mental. Florida State cannot look at that. This is a new game. BC has nothing to lose because nobody, myself included, thinks they have a chance and they're going to use that for motivation. It's part of it. I don't think Florida State should be ashamed of that. It's just, hey, they don't think we're going to be ready, so now we should take this as motivation. you got to turn it around. That's, that's just part of college football. That's just part of wanting to be ready for every game, and that's also trying to be a national champion. You're ranked in the top five for a reason. Go prove it. To that point, speaking of prove it, College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth with only Locked On, like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Friday. I say this on every show. I'm telling you, this is a fun podcast. It's going to be broadcast here on Locked On Seminoles and across every college team's network on YouTube. All you have to do is go in to this channel or whatever one you want, for that matter. And if you get on the YouTube channel, you'll see it 11 to 1. And it'll also be taped, so you can come back and check it out later if you want to do that. It's really cool. They're going to have breakdowns on the games, injuries, player and players going against other ones, key matchups, future NFL draft picks across the board. Make sure you check that out. It's a lot of fun, and I was on it a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to be on it again, I'm sure, next week as Florida State gets ready to play at Clemson next week. So that's a lot of fun for me. It's a lot of fun, and I hope that you folks enjoy it a lot too because this this is the good stuff in, in life. Make sure that you enjoy it to the fullest, and it's free, so why not? FanDuel. 
Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers for Brent from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all new customers who bet 5 bucks get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So this segment three here is a culmination of the first two. And it's just a personal thing that I have. Florida State should win this game. And I, I for those of you that want to know, I think, BC will score like a late touchdown, make it closer than it is, probably a lot closer. Uh, like 41 to 17 is kind of my pick. I was going to go 41 20, but I don't think they'll even get to 20. I'm going to go 41 17. If this game is even closer than that, that's another concern, but they need to show early because the way this works, from my knowledge, from talking to other people that get a vote in the polls and all that. And I, I don't, but for those people that are vote in the Associated Press, et cetera, and I'll explain why this matters momentarily. If you do well early in a game, it'll impact people because they flip the channels just like everybody else. They're in a booth somewhere. Maybe it's the Florida State game or somewhere else. And in a press box, there are TVs going before a game. Like you're watching, hey, this game's on. Let's check it out. And all the media members stand around and watch. If you play well, you impact them, but you only get to see a little of that. And most of these people do not, I repeat, do not watch much of the football. They fill out these brackets, and it's a lot of garbage. There's a lot of garbage. I've had open conversations about that with people and coaches. Coaches poll the same way. A lot of times it's a GA that fills it out. It's a joke. But that being stated, it still changes who ends up in the polls at a higher rate, promoting your program, and eventually, yes, the college football playoff committee <clears throat> excuse me, can say, hey, we don't. We don't do it that way. We, we just looking at it, just just focus on what they're still human. If all year Florida State is in the top five of the Associated Press poll and didn't have any drops, that's going to help them at the end. I don't care what they say. They're human, man. They're flat out human. If you do not think so, you're crazy. People are going to follow trends. It's been going on since the beginning of man. Florida State needs to win this game and do so convincingly in quarters one and two. If you get up big, even if you coast in the second half, which I still don't advise, they should be able, should be able to rotate players, anything like Jordan Travis come out of the game, take out Benson, Coleman, whatever. Change the offensive linemen, try different formations, try different combinations. There's a million things you can do to get better with a big lead that you've earned. Uh, and if Boston College kind of wants to help you along with some fumbles or something, by all means, Take advantage of the opportunities and maximize on the scoreboard. Final point here that I want to make before this podcast concludes. They're a week away, basically, from Clemson. There's no reason to think this BC game is going to be all that competitive, or it shouldn't be. You can make a statement for not only what the Clemson team and their coaches have coming next week, but what their fans are. Say what you will about Clemson. That fan base is rabid. That place, there will be just an incredible amount of people going bonkers because they don't take losing very well, especially after the stretch they've been on over the last 10 years. They've fallen off, obviously, but right now it's like if this if, if the Florida State Clemson game goes sideways, things could go off the rails completely. And it could go the other direction, too. They're the hardest team for me personally to project right now. I have no idea what their emotional state is. And that is vital, especially with a team that is starting a true sophomore at quarterback in Cade Clubman. Talented, but he's unproven at the collegiate level. They need things to go well. Those fans are going to be hyped. Come out here and you punch Boston College in the mouth, set a precedent. It also set a precedent for their fans on what's coming out there. And you'll be able to quiet them a little quicker if you start good next week in Death Valley, like get up 10 to nothing. That place will be as silent as a church 
on Sunday morning when the mass is going on. Make no mistake. It'll get real quiet, real quick. That's what Florida State needs. If they screw around this week, maybe that those things take into the next week. We don't know, but you need to set that precedent and get used to being dominant early. That's how you win road games. Take the crowd out. Make no doubt about it that you're the better team. With that, everybody enjoy this college football weekend. It's going to be a pretty good week across the college football landscape. Starting to see a few better games or some unique games to check out. Have fun with it, and everybody be safe. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all again very soon.